perspective into earth. This is going to be really important for us, especially considering um, the, the situation many of us um, find ourselves in. In fact, I got to tell you, um, of anybody that I'm super intimate with, I'll, I'm going to describe um, kind of a place that we're, we're sitting in right now. So, so, so tonight's word, by the way. Oh, boy, I, I meant to do this. So we're going to, this is a series. Um, I was going to bring all on Jesus, Jesus the way, Jesus the truth, Jesus the life. And God said, what are you doing? Holy Spirit said, no, I, no, I, I need you to do your job. So what, we're, what, he, what he laid on my heart is something just slightly different. Tonight, we're going to talk prophetically about in, in, in the, the, the season we're in, in particular coming into 2019, coming out of 2018. If you, if you haven't read, um, I, I've reread um, what he laid on my heart going into 2018, and it's, 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 a, it's a riot. Um, I want to um, offer for us to be careful, for us to be cautious, not to despise prophecy. Um, I actually wrote what the definition of despise is. Um, let's see, despise, contempt, scorn, meaning to regard as unworthy to one's notice or consideration. If, if we're catching prophetic words, and, and if I had really, when I, when I brought what I brought in 2018, if I really had paid attention to it, it has saved me some heartache this summer. <laughs> I'll just, there's a clue. The reason I'm telling you that is because I think what the Father is doing is he's going to say, he's, he sets prophecy for some, sometimes to give us, um, give us some um, action plans for what's to come. All right. Brilliant. And you know what? I'm going to know you've got an ear toward heaven. I want to, I don't, I, I just, I'm going to relieve you from the um, need to give me affirmation tonight. So you can go ahead and be quiet. You can give me affirmation if you want. But if you're, if you're listening, if we're kind of doing this right, now I'm going to risk it. This is risky. All right, we can, I don't mind if the whole congregation and everybody out there sits there in this posture and listens. Listen intently for heaven, because what I believe is going to happen tonight, I believe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start something that the Holy Spirit is going to finish in each and every one of us. Maybe finish would be a strong word. Going to build on. Yeah, I like to build on, right? Yeah. Because um, I'm going uh, to speak prophetically and I'm going to talk some from Dave. If I'm speaking prophetically, don't despise the prophetic. Find the truth. If I'm speaking for Dave, that's like, okay, Dave's got a set of circumstances here. How does those set of circumstances, um, uh, how do I identify with those and pull from that to, to my life? And the Holy Spirit's going to help you. Why? We're in a tough season. But I'll tell you what. Recently, it's occurring to me, this is a lot less to do with us than anything else. Um, I had two very apostolic people say this to me today, and I, I am in the same way. Tommy has the same thing going on. They said this, um, I'm fighting off not thinking the, the circumstances in is due to my impurity. Anybody else feel that way? Anybody else fight that off? Yes, you do. <laughs> it's a natural, natural byproduct. But I want to I wanna explain something. If we are in what we might consider a brawl, in whatever capacity, we can, you know, I, I can tell you what brawls I'm in. There's, there's, it seems to me sometimes, it seems to me recently, much of what I put my hands to is turning to lead. I feel like Charlie Brown on, 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 um, on Halloween. All I got is a rock. It feels like I'm pushing a lot of boulders uphill. It feels like what I put my hand to is doesn't have favor on it. Feels like. There was a, Valentin had a post. I see Scott got onto it. It was really good. He said, if you have a, po a one sign of a um, poverty mentality is if you, um, if you think something's going to go, is always going to go wrong. Well, I'm in the opposite of that. Things have been going so wrong for me in the last couple of years that I'm feeling like, hey, something's bound to go right. I'm actually, I don't have a poverty spirit. I don't think something's going to go wrong. It's all gone wrong. I'm, I'm now like, I'm so full of hope and optimism, it just can't keep going wrong. Yeah. Um, there's two things going on I want you to be aware of that's going to take some pressure off you. Number one, 
most of us, most of you, if not all of you, listen to me. This is te little mini teaching number one, second and third years, first years, get all this. We are in this kind of run, and I'm not going to stay on this, of all are called, few are chosen. This is the way I like to consider this. If you look at Matthew 20, 22, Jesus talks about uh, the king and the wedding feast. He said, finishes the story with all are called, few are chosen. What's the difference between called and chosen? I'll use chosen. To me, it's this process right here. Faithful to assignment. I'm not going to stay on here because I'm setting the stage for where most of us, if not all of us, are at in this very moment, I believe. Most of us are right in this spirit. If you're here tonight, let me speak prophetically to you. You're absolutely in this spot right here. And actually what's going on is you're in this transition zone. You've been faithful and faithful and faithful and faithful. And God's seen your faithfulness, and he's increasing your anointing for your mantle. I'll leave that there. If you guys want more on that, just let me know, and we'll teach on that another time. A second thing going on. Why? So when this is going on, this can be a painful process. Here's what happens. Every time we get promoted, we talk about this all over the place, part of this is we get promoted back to kindergarten. We don't know how to carry what it is we're carrying. Holy smokes. Uh, man, I don't know. Sometime this summer, it dawned on me that I wasn't a very good prophet. I wasn't speaking in words of knowledge. And I was complaining to God on it one day. I was like, Lord, why don't I get uh, all these words of knowledge like these other guys are, are get? You know, why, why does Coker get all that stuff? He says, you haven't asked for it. I said, oh. Yeah, right. Well, Father, I'd like to have words of knowledge. Well, crud. I see why I didn't ask for it. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. He might give it to you. Now I've got to steward all these words of knowledge. And I don't know how to do it. Right? So now it's, we're, we're all in some capacity, all of us are in this kind of learning process. Listen, I put in here purpose and position. Listen, as we get positioned, I'm, I'm, I'm asking people, what's your position? How are you positioned? What's your title? How's Kevin know it? Kevin, Kevin, is Kevin here? Is there Kevin here? All right. <laughs> yeah. How's heaven? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kevin. How's uh? How's heaven? What's heaven? Who's heaven know you to be? That's a good question. Not even in my notes. Who's heaven know you to be? You know? Some of our circumstances are because heaven knows us to be someone. We're growing into it. Secondly, and I'm, I, I'm not going to teach on this one either because I don't understand it fully, at least. I don't know how much of it I even grasp, but I heard this this morning. So, um, so listen, this was a neat one. Um, on the way in, doing battle, um, uh, started hearing some, getting some flack. Um, you know what flack is? All right, so I'm sick of flack. I'm going to get into that in a minute, the nonsense. I'm sick of flack. So I said, Father, hey, can I speak in my own language here? He said, yeah, sure. And I said, knock it off, just like that. I have a dog that's very aggressive. He's a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. He's an uncut alpha male. And to speak to Boone the way to get his attention, sometimes you have to talk to him like you mean business, right? I, I, I talk to him, Boone, knock it off, right? That gets his attention. Well, the flat coming in today, I wasn't sick. I was a little sick of it. So I said, knock it off. And then I said this. I'm a son of the most high God. Who are you to talk to me? Boom. Stopped. Instantly. I want to give that to you. A little gift. Have permission to speak your language. Now, I don't always say knock it off. Normally, when I'm dealing with, with you know, the dark side, I'm a little more a little relaxed about it. Like, hey, you know, pipsqueak, take a hike. What are you doing? Are you nuts? Keep picking on me. I'm going to tell my dad. That wasn't working this morning. Kept picking on me. Right afterwards, I heard this. The earth is groaning, son. So I want to I give you part two to what's going on. 
Another little insight to what's going on. If your life feels a little topsy-turvy, then your fault. Listen. Be pure. We talk about this a lot. Grace is not a substitute for purity. Be pure. But your lack of purity as you grow is not the reason why your circumstances are looking so goofy. It's because of these things right here. You're on, you're on, you're on point. You're stirring the pot. And the earth is growing, groaning. I don't know as I really know what the earth is groaning means. I, I'm, I, it's the first time I really kind of put those words together. I've been toying. I, I think I've been hearing it a little bit, but I've been, I've been, I've been not quite to that there, right? I'm aware that um, um, the other side's paying attention, right? I'm aware of that. But I didn't go all the way to the earth is groaning. This is pretty scriptural, actually. Very scriptural. Listen, we know this scripture. We bring it all the time. For creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly, but by he, capital H, who subjected it into the hope. So I want to take a little bit of pressure off of you and I tonight. I mean, for me, this is, this is a huge load off. If you got turmoil, all right, listen. Sometimes the adversary does, isn't smart enough not to wake a sleeping giant. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think he's that smart. Um, I'm actually teaching on this right here, so I'm going to transition as we go down here. Um, so many of you know, it's the first time I've spoke uh, since I started this. Uh, back in November, I went on what, I, what I'm kind of calling as a sequester. Um, I, I kind of pulled back. Uh, where's Catherine? Catherine called it Dave's No, no, no Church November. Uh, you know, that's, it's like, it's like and, and the way she said it, I was like, you know, that was, you know, I mean, your No Church November. <laughs> I thought I was, you know, crud, man. Out of the mouth of babes. What I did, um, I was having a hard time hearing from heaven, straight up. Um, the voices in my head were, you know, from, as you know, we all have this, right? Your voices, what voices, what voices are crowding in your head? Just curious. We have a lot of them, other people, right? Atmosphere, your own adversary, heaven. When things get loud, and you know the loud isn't all that great, probably not heaven. And so, how, how can I do my job such that it is if I can't hear from heaven? And so I, um, I, I um, with a lot of consideration, I, I just went into the cave. Um, after two weeks, I would say, I put it this way, the voices got quieted by about 50%. Now, I'm not schizophrenic, right? <laughs> it's not funny, actually. Medic yeah, it's actually not. Um, hey, by the way, schizophrenia is on the rise. Schizophrenia is on the rise. A little side note. For those of you who have ears to hear, here. Um, uh, so two weeks, but still, I, I, just, I just couldn't hear clearly. Um, after three weeks, I would say the volume um, was reduced to about 75%, which was pretty cool. On the uh, morning, and I, I, I remember transition times in my life by, by events or dates. It's my way my, na my brain naturally works. On Friday morning of the women's conference, um, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning with the first um, con open conduit to heaven that I felt in a while where, oh, boy, here, you know, okay. Um, I'm not saying, you know, his presence filled my house, which, is, which happens, I, I would like it to happen more, but it happens on occasion. But it was heaven talking. And, and he said this, you do what you're to do, what you can do, and I'll do what I can do. Now, he's speaking his language to me the way I understand it. He might not speak to you that way. 
That's the way he spoke to me. And when he spoke that, he gave me the millisecond download of understanding of what he was talking about, which was pretty neat. First thing he showed me um, in what I saw was I saw two things. I saw procrastination and distraction. And it's interesting. Um, for me personally, now this is where, you know, is your ear to heaven? Come on, let's get back. Let's make sure, make sure I'm going to bring, bring some stuff. I don't want to lose you, but I also want to make sure your ears stay on heaven. Because don't take me, mine, for you. Very important. Very important. Right? Father is speaking to us tonight individually. Tonight is about us individually. Right? If I have to start prophesying individually, I will. Okay? Super important. All right? So for me, what he showed by my procrastination was, um, most, most of you have, have heard the stories of my kites. Um, it was my kite not coming off the ground. And, and four or five things, boom, 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 that I could have done that I didn't do that have gotten my kite off the ground. And, I, and it, it's so funny. When I saw the four or five things, I knew, oh, yeah. And, and I, the, I, know, I know I should have done them. I knew about them. It wasn't top secret. It wasn't like I, I knew it was things that I just was on my plate to do, and I didn't do them. And, and, and the understanding kind of started trip, trickling in. Son, you have to do your part. What is he saying to you? This is what he's saying to me. You're, you're you know, I'm right here to help you. But you're not releasing me to help you. This is what he's saying to me. The other thing he showed me was distraction. And in the distraction, what I saw was nonsense. I was getting tripped up with a bunch of nonsense. Um, man, what was the second thing I talked about? Where's the second year? I said two things on the nonsense. What was the second one? Do you remember? Don't say the first one. It was the procrastination. Okay, you're right. Um, so um, I don't know what nonsense is going to look for you guys. But what it showed for me is what the cost of my procrastination was costing me. Nonsense. I'm, I, I, I ought to put the blog back up. I wrote about this like a year and a half ago. Um, procrastination is like a high interest rate credit card. You don't think you're going to pay for it. I'm going to go out and buy this thing. And you don't think you're going to get a bill for it. You're always getting a bill for procrastination. Always. Because if it's something you didn't need to do, you're not procrastinating anyway. This is really important. I'm, I'm actually, if you, if, you can, I want, if, if you can have eyes to see, ears to hear, I'm speaking prophetically right now. 2019. Season. Age. Two weeks from now, we're going to talk about the um, prophetic word for the body, for the church, the local church. On January 6th, we're going to talk about 2019 season, the age for the globe. Man. What is, your, what, is the nonsense in our, what is the nonsense in our lives? See, this is an offer. It's not a mandate. I'm just offering this. Again, Father, thank you. Keep, keep talking for it. You, hopefully, some of us are starting to write things down that the Lord's hearing, what you're hearing from the Lord. Stay, keep that ear to heaven. Keep the ear to heaven. Find truth. Truth, truth, truth. Be a bulldog, man. What, what, is, what, is, what is in our lives that is nonsense? I like the word nonsense. It really, I'm in love with it. It, 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 it defines what I'm talking about to me. If you have a better word, write down your better word. Because the nonsense is distracting me from my assignment and my mantle. There is, there is no way for a distraction to not cost me time. Or emotion. Or physicality. Or energy. 
or resources. When I'm talking distraction, listen, I don't know what your distractions are. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you what they are unless you make me. I want heaven to tell you what they are. <laughs> yeah, um, Kiso, keep your sense of humor. Um, so as we, as we, um, um, as we kind of, um, well, I'm not going to, yeah, this is good because I really want to get into this. Um, so I'm setting the stage for this right here, and this is part one of, of God's um, offer to help. That work? Okay. Yeah. All right, so setting this up, the turmoil of our lives for most of us at most of the at level is not self-inflicted. Maybe there's some self-inflicted in there. I don't think heaven's all that worried about it. If you're finding it, going through it, Holy Spirit saying, "Hey, Holy Spirit saying convicting, okay, repent, move on." Right? No shame, no guilt, no condemnation, period. Most of what we're experiencing is because of this and because of this. Okay. All right, part one of what to do about it. Um, if there's two things that um, I would love to impart to me and get through my, I've, I've been saying this to a few people and it never plays well. So, so I'll see if it plays with you. Get it through your thick head. See, it, it didn't play, so far it's not playing, that's not playing well. Nobody's like, nobody's like saying, oh, thank you, Dave, for that. Right? So, I mean, this is the way I talk to me. Dave, you got to get this through your thick head. Right? So, um, if there's two things that I could get through my thick head, <laughs> keep your sense of humor, please. Um, it's one, taking every thought captive. This is, a, this is only four words. Holy smokes. Four words, taking every thought captive. We know the rest of it. Making obedient. Punishing the acts of disobedience. Do we know what punishing is? It's a, we've thought of that a thousand times. Second is where I want to go tonight. How to build our team. Jesus said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus tonight on this right here, two weeks, I'm going to hit this one, and then on the six, I'll go out here, all right? So this is going to be kind of neat. One is you and me, right? Jesus, this is, this is basically Jesus' model. A couple little rules of thumb. First of all, please don't get caught up into the numbers, all right? Just because Jesus had Peter, James, John, it's not set in stone on the law that now you must have Peter, James, and John. Right? It's not what he's talking about. For some of us, this comes more naturally than others. So these numbers can shift around a little bit. And also, please don't get caught up in this dividing line right here. In fact, the way I like to teach this more and more is most people don't know that line's there. I don't feel obligated to tell people, there's my line. You are now not in my 12. You are now in a 70. You know, mess up again, and you're going to the masses. <laughs> it's not what I do. I would ask you, please don't do that. I could see how that might hurt somebody's feelings. Ecclesiastes, I'm going to read from a couple scriptures here um, so we have some scriptural basis. Um, this is a really neat scripture. Um, all of us kind of know this. Um, then I returned. Listen to this, man. See, most of us know this scripture, but we skip some of these parts. This is funny. <laughs> listen, the scripture's a riot. Then I returned, and I saw vanity under the sun. So, don't despise the prophetic word. Some hybrid of this, uh, a, if you are sitting here, listening here, and deciding, I have no need of that, 
I would challenge you to consider your vanity, please. There is one alone without companion. He has neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors. Nor is his eye satisfied with riches. But he never asks, for whom do I toll and deprive myself of good? There is also vanity and a grave misfortune. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lay down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm together alone? How can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. A three-cord stand is not quickly broken. That is fun, fun scripture right there. When I'm talking about building your team, a little bit of word to that. I don't have this in my notes, but it occurs to me. I, I probably haven't talked about this before. Um, so you might not know what I'm talking about. Um, I will get there. Um, Jesus' model of 1, 3, 12 um, is fascinating in a number of ways. First of all, at first glance, when I first started considering this, I, my, my thought would have been that he's not doing this um, for himself as a demonstration. He's actually only doing this for us. But then I actually read the scripture. And I found out, oh, crud. He had people around him for him too. I want to, the, the, the biggest, most glaring is at the garden. He asked, he asked Peter, this isn't throwing Peter, James, and John under the bus. We want to be careful here. Because um, uh, a lot of us sometimes think about, hey, I can't be those clabberheads after three years with Jesus would do that. Oh, Yeah. Have you ever been so fatigued you haven't been there for your friend? You clab your head? Does that play? That doesn't play? Clab your head? All right. I'm just trying to keep my sense of humor here. <laughs> my, I, as I studied, as I've, I've thought a lot about that, um, why did Jesus ask them to do that? You think it was for them? Let me ask you, is it possible that Jesus had to endure suffering just a little more intently because his three inner circle wasn't praying and speaking something into the atmosphere that shifted an atmosphere that during his suffering that somehow he could draw on something? Were they going to keep him from the cross? Absolutely not. But at that moment, Jesus knew he was what? Utterly alone. Where if those three had stood with him, maybe he wouldn't have been utterly alone. This this model isn't just as an example. He actually drew on it himself. I'm going to, this is a very emotional scripture. Um, for me personally, so I'm, you know, I, I think I can get through this um, pretty well. Um, um, Paul is a pretty neat guy. This is among his last words. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Timothy 4. Um, where, did I have the scripture on here? Yeah, Timothy 4, um, 6 through the end of the chapter. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Um, remember, heaven is speaking right now. and I'm speaking prophetically. See, I don't want to say I know you. How do we see, how do you see you? Let's take some pressure off, man. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only me, not to me only, but all to, also to all 
who have loved his appearing. Be diligent and come to me quickly. He's writing to Timothy. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and having departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for the ministry. I'm going to resort to a bunch of this stuff as we go through this. Notice Mark, by the way. Not as, not as close, uh, you know, not, not the guy living under his favor, his whole ministry. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left uh, with Carpus at Troas, and when you come, the, and the books, and especially the parchments. Listen to this one. I'm going to teach on this a little bit in, in the days to come. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. We're going to teach on that. Don't get tripped up on that. I feel like this is an act of mercy, by the way. You must also be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. Listen to this one. At first, now, you're picking up what, who I'm talking about here? I'm talking about Paul's team. At first, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it be not charged against them. I want to make a point on that one. I think we're going to find there are times and seasons in our lives where we feel that way. I want to say it's okay, but I know it's not easy. Yeah, uh, Sean just said it's graduate level. Walking and understanding of it is absolutely graduate level. Listen to this. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Then he finishes, greet Prisca and Achilla and the household of Oniphorus, Aristus, Stayed at Corinth, and Trophimus I have left at Miletus. Do your utmost to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, as well as Prudence, Linus, Claudia, and all the brethren. Lord Jesus be with you in spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. There's a lot of neat little things in here about how we build our team. And I want to, I'm going to be really clumsy in this part. Right, because uh, Holy Spirit really needs to fine tune this. Because I'm, you know, I'm going to speak a little bit out of Dave, <laughs> some out of Scripture, and let the Holy Spirit pick up and fill in some blanks. This is this is how personally I view this. Um, I need an inner circle around me whose only agenda for me is heaven. Here's one way I know if somebody has an agenda for me other than heaven. If I don't perform, I'm out of the club. They're angry with me. They're upset with me. If I can perform my way out of your inner circle, I was not in your inner circle. Now, this is over time. Over time, we even saw this with Alexander, right? Right? Alexander, over a, pro a prolonged period of time, did him much harm. Probably moved from here to out here. But everybody else in here abandoned him. This is a super important thing. This thing here, as we begin to build our team, if, you know, first of all, um, this is, man, I think I just said this, really important. Um, I'll just go through the steps. So, so, <laughs> Some of this is a little bit hard to deliver. Um, this can't be a draft. Jesus drafted. Yeah, he did. I get it. Follow me, and they did. It's going to be hard for us to pull that off. <laughs> Personally, I don't have vision for it. <laughs> In my experience, this is an organic thing. 
This, and, and I, um, so did I quote Tommy? Yeah, I, to, I quote Tommy to begin. So, you know, Tommy Green, I'm going to talk about Tommy and, um, and um, what's his name? Uh, Charlie Coker um, a little bit. Because both of these, by the way, um, <laughs> all right, never mind. Um, I didn't draft in Tommy Green. Tommy didn't draft in Dave. Over time, I'd be impressed on the Lord. Hey, bro, I'm praying for you. I love, um, you know, I won't say another name, one of our dear brothers um, has complimented Scott and I both. How come the only time I hear, when I hear from you is not you want something? You only reach out to me when you're saying you're praying for me. Ooh, hear that. If our only contact with somebody is a need, you're not setting the stage for an inner circle. You're setting the stage for a draw, a withdrawal. All of my contact with you is withdrawal from me. Now, I might do that. So, and you might do that. But probably crossing over this line into here. We're going to, you know, I want the Holy Spirit to tell us why this is important. Prayer. Our inner circles should not have to be coerced to pray for us. What I'm hoping the Holy Spirit's doing is starting to develop in us either one of two things. Either one, oh, I have an inner circle kind of in the, in the construction here already. Or two, oh, I need, I need a little work to do. Ecclesiastes, man. Um, oh, I do have my notes. One of the things that's coming on January 6th, 6th January, is the difference between elitism and elect. When Jesus talks about the elect, he's not talking about the elite. When we're building our inner circle, we need to be really cautious about not letting elitism into our thinking. Because let me tell you something. There are people that God has in our pathways that are not going to fit into a, the act like us, walk like us, talk like us, and look like us box. He doesn't need us all walking in this, with the people that only walk the way we walk. What good are you to me to do that? If you think the way I think all the time, I don't need you. Unless you're praying for me. And I'm praying for you. That's an overstatement. I'll give you that. All right. That was the Dave truth come through. That was a little rough. But it's a good point. Um, when it became um, clear to, to us that, um, that I was going to be seated... Uh, in the office. Um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and, and I began to develop, I, but I did know this, I, I need help, right? So I, um, I began to develop a list of people that I thought could help me. And, you know, Dalton was at the top of the list, right? So that's, I'm going for Dalton. I need, I want, you know, everyone trained by the best, right? No, not so much. The one guy that I really wasn't paying attention to was the guy that came the first time he came was Charlie Coker. Now, if you remember when Charlie came, there was a rawness there, an edge that bordered on Charlie. I, you know, I know you know I'm bringing it in tonight. Uh, bordered on being, uh, for me, it was like, oh, rough, man. It's like, oh, man. It would not have been, I already have edge. You know, I, I didn't need his help. So I was like, uh, there's got to be somebody else. Guess what? Over the next four years, um, is it four years? Something like that. Um, Charlie has developed into being among my closest personal confidence. I trust that man as much as I trust. That I, I would, I would, I would, I would love to. I would. I, I'll tell you, he is in my inner circle. I trust him. 
I know that he only has heaven for me. By the way, let me finish a little thing here because this is important when I'm talking about Charlie. This, by the way, is our authority structure. Vertical, the Godhead. Horizontal, man's authority. We, if, if, if we're not building our team in consideration of our authority structure, um, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. There, there are no islands that are successful. Doesn't work. Doesn't happen. The authority structure, we know the Godhead is a vertical. I put over here the fivefold, our accountability and earth. There's probably more things in there. Your boss, you know, the policeman, code. <laughs> if we don't have our authority structures in place, um, our inner circle is going to be a little handcuffed. Because we're going to recount on things from our inner circle that really should be coming from over here. And another thing to be cautious of, be cautious not to draw from here into here. That'll happen organic. Sometimes it happens. Listen to me. I'm not saying that can't happen. Sometimes it happens, but it's got to happen organically. What I've seen time and time again, especially in the church, is everybody wants somebody from here into here. And so as one or two or three people, I want it in my inner circle, and we go to the draft, and we get all offended because somebody that's meant to be an authority over us, we want to be our peer. And let me tell you something. The people that walk in, in, in leadership and in senior leadership with integrity and care and, and mercy and grace will say no. It is for your and my protection. I just, I've had Charlie, unbeknownst to him, kind of in this kind of thing right here, I just moved him recently into here. Why? He is walking in an authority in something. He is, he is, he is, um, he is seated regionally in a, as a prophetic voice. There's no, absolutely, there's no question about that. What, you better say that. What did you say? Yeah, right. Uh, scripturally, right. You, see, you get a prophet's reward when you receive a prophet. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we can't have this, right? So when I, when I say to Charlie, listen, I need you to hold me account on this issue. It's something he's personally walked through. Now, I know, now we're still here, right? All right. Um, well, it seems like there's something else I was going to mention on that. Okay. Oh, man, we're, we're really good on time, too. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, heaven, I'm going to need you. I'm going to introduce the concept of protected conversations. Well, <laughs> I'm going to highlight Jesus' introduction of protected conversations in the Gospels. There was more reason that Jesus had this than just, um, than just um, inner circle. I don't know if that's even the best way I want to put that. I'll put it to you this way. There was things he had entrusted to James, John, and Peter that he could not entrust to this group here. Why? Well, number one, there's a spy in this camp. Here, boy, this is, this again, Holy Spirit. Um, there was a reason why Jesus had Judas leave the room before he said John 14, 15, 16, and 17. If Judas was in there and the adversary could have heard that, um, Jesus could have very much undermined his own death on the cross. We need to get this. Somehow begin to percolate on this. We have to be very careful sometimes who we speak to and what we speak to certain people. Paul puts it this way, be careful that this liberty of yours does not cause those who are less mature of whom Christ died to fall away. There are, what's that? Um, 
That's a good question. Um, Dennis asked if Peter, James, and John were more mature. Um, I don't know if I can answer that. I, I think maybe. I mean, you notice the people you read about before the cross, we read about after the cross, right? You don't hear a whole lot about Simon the Zealot, right? Which is a, Simon the Zealot was a cool guy, by the way. Yeah, one of my buddies. Yeah. Um, there are things, so first of all, um, let, me, let me talk to partners. Um, just here, just ch check this box. Our spouses are in our inner circle. Now, you would, you, you, you would think that would be intuitive. But I want to speak this out to our house and individually. If your trust relationship with your spouse isn't where it can be, my, my, my little Dirogan guess is that you got nothing going on here anyway. If I can't trust, if you can't trust the person that you're within a one, if you're, if you're not in a place of relationship there, get that one fixed. Because I don't know how you can have a healthy thing here with the other people if that unity is not in place and solid. That, does that mean, I mean, for me personally, I don't tell Rob everything. I can. I hold, and simultaneously, I hold nothing from her. Rob and I, after 33 years, have learned that, you know, she doesn't want to know everything, number one. And, she, and part of it is like, hey, um, if you think that this is going to tank me, please don't tell me. We, and I, it's the same thing with her. There's sometimes she hits me with stuff like, oh, man, you know, man, I, I just didn't need to hear that. We walk by the Spirit. But there's no secrets. So for us going forward understanding what we're doing, understanding what we've got, understanding where we're going as a house, as a community, as the bride, globally. If I, I, I want to um, beseech you. Paul says those words a lot. To begin to build and get in line your team. There, is, there, is a, um, there are things that you can say to your three that you can't say to your twelve. I don't go around telling everybody, remember, I, you know, I don't feel obligated to tell everybody where they're at. All right, let's see if I have anything on the list of what I got left here. Um, oh, yeah. With friends like Job's, Who needs enemies? I'm, uh, I'm going to blow this guy up a little bit. Um, so we know the story of Job. Uh, I know it better than some because I just spent all night reading it not long ago. Finally, enough is enough. Um, you know, I'm going to find out what's really going on here. Um, and um, this is a neat story. All of us know it. God's up there, whole separate teaching. Um, you, know, you know, reviewing the sons of God. I don't know what that means. That was pretty wild. Satan shows up, and he says, what are you doing here? I'm going to and fro on the earth. He says, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, yeah I have actually. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's doing really good, real faithful guy, but you protect him, and you won't let me touch him. So, you know, he's not that big, good of an example for me. You got a big protection around him. He says, I'll tell you what. You can take all that he owns. Just don't touch him. Well, oh, Cool. So this story happens to Job. Job, like the next millisecond, has a, is having a nice dinner at his house, and some servant comes running up to him and says this, hey, uh, you know, you're not going to believe this, but, you know, the Meridians came and stole all our sheep and killed all the servants, and I alone was uh, survived. And while he was speaking, another servant came up, and he says, boy, you're not going to believe this. The Chaldeans came, stole all your camels, and killed all your servants, and I'm the only one that survived. And while he was speaking, the, another servant came up. He says, you're not going to like this one. Your sons and daughters were all in a house, and a great tempest go up and blew the house down, and none survived except me to come tell you about it. All happened in a millisecond. So, you know, man, can you imagine Job? 
I mean, is this just even a true story? We talked about what do you say today about um, trials and tribulations, not what you were, uh, the words you had on, it really struck me. Um, this morning on your, on your slide, you had something about um, suffering, pain and suffering. I mean, that's pain and suffering, baby. You just lost your sons and daughters, right? Satan goes back up to heaven, and God's like, huh, have you considered my servant Job? He said, yeah, but he st still doesn't count because you didn't let me hurt him. You only let me take what was his. You didn't let me, you didn't let me harm, harm him, which is, you know, by the way, we've got to understand the mindset of our adversary. I can't believe he even think that way, but he apparently he does. God says, tell you what, do whatever you want to him. You can't kill him. So Job gets covered with sores, as we know. He's on an ash heap scraping the sores. Right? I've never been on an ash heap scraping my sores. And then his three best friends come up. <laughs> and from Job, you know, 4 to Job 38... So we got 34 chapters of it, except for Elihu. His three best friends come up and start trying to convince him chapter after chapter how this is his own fault. You brought this on you. You did this because you have this and you have pride. And Job's like, well, no, no, I didn't. And he says, you know, with friends like you, who needs enemies? I think that's probably where that came from. It's 34 verses of these guys taking turns. And this isn't like three chapters. You know, paragraphs of the guys talking, and, and then Job talks. This is chapter after chapter after chapter of these guys very eloquently and speaking with great language and speaking on behalf of God. You read this stuff and, you're like, hey, you know, this actually makes sense. You're right. He probably did have it coming. He probably was greedy. He probably did with hell. He probably did do all that stuff. They could convince you of what this Job could have done. And all the while, Job's like, no. Job's own wife, curse God and die. Come on. What I want to speak prophetically into our culture is consider these things when we're in each other's circle, when, as friendship. I mean, listen, I don't, want to, I don't want to start getting dividing lines here. It's not the point. I'm not, I'm not building all these separate teams. Most of you have heard by now, in 2016, my company lost something close to a million bucks. Everything I had, I, 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 I threw out there. Everything Rob and I had, everything. And then I went on a 36 and a half day fast, and I came out of a 36 half day fast, and I had a mark right there and a mark right there show up on my arm. And over time, I started getting all these, you know, reports. You have lupus. You have, a, you have an autoimmune disease. And we don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know how this is going to turn out. It could do this. It could do that. It could metamorphose into this. It could metamorphose into that. You got to get blood tested every month so because you're careful on your liver and your kidneys and all this other stuff. And over the last, since that time, what's the date? I know, I figure on dates. So 36 and a half days, this started right after that, two, three days afterwards. From that time, after, I was systematically having my, my personal systems under attack. Uh, six, eight months ago, the doctor said to me, he said, it's in your shoulders. No, it's not. I don't feel it. My shoulders, interesting something you said today struck me. My shoulders in the last two or three months have been trying to do this. I can't sleep at night because of the pain in my shoulders. I can't lay on my side. I can't lay on my back. I can't lay on my belly with my arms up here. At any given time, I don't walk well. My hands are under attack. And yeah, for a while... I didn't need Job's friends. I had my own voice going on. What did you do wrong, Dave? How'd you miss it? This man never gave an inch. This man, this man, this man. <laughs> Let me explain. You. You haven't given an inch.
I don't know where my faith would be if you attacked me. I don't know if I could have stood this long, two years, uh, whatever. And now, say, you just woke up a sleeping giant. I begin to, now, now I can see a little clearer. Oh. Oh. Stop picking on me or I'm going to tell my dad. This is really, um, this, is, this is just part one. Um, I call this his gift to us, is each other. We're going to have, as we begin to build our teams, by the way, this line I don't think is going to be visible. And I'm not so sure. It was a little bit visible in Jesus' time, but he sent the 70 man. They're, 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 don't, you know, do not hear elitism. Do not hear, um, what's another word I'm looking for? Um, click. What's that? Oh, man, exclusive, ex exclusivity, exclusivity. <laughs> don't hear that. Each of us should have two, three, four, five people. that are praying for us on a regular basis. I have time to cover this. I have a prayer board. I brought this before. I've got a prayer board on my refrigerator. Most of you guys know about it. I want to offer that concept that um, we begin to pray for one another. The ones we're partnered with more intimately and the ones we're partnered with um, collectively. If you, if, you, if you need help, listen, here's, I, I heard something in the service today, and I, I don't remember where I heard it. I can't remember if it was during worship or if it was um, when Scott was, was, was speaking. Um, I think it was Scott was speaking. If this is hard for you, start reaching out to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, most of my personal inner circles took an element of me making the first step and being persistent. There was a time for he and I that we, we man, there's years. What was it? Gosh. Um, we went in the whale at the same time. I kept calling and kept calling and kept calling and kept calling. Different whales. Yeah, we were in the same whale. Kept calling, kept calling, no less painful. Right? We, there's, 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 the adversary is going to give you reasons why you, you don't persist and press through. Father, good first night. Um, Lord, I um, you know, what's written down on the paper, God? Father, for each one of us individually, what do you have? Um, if um, listen, I wonder, just uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do a repeat after. Oh, I keep thinking I'm going to fall off the stage. I don't want to um, repeat after me, but I wonder if we could just um, just get our hands out. And I'm just going to speak it. You can speak it internally, externally. I don't care how you do it. Father, do you want to talk to me? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me?
So a couple things. Um, I shared this this morning. For some of us in here, you need to hear this. Um, your job is not to fight Jesus' battle for him. Some, some of your, some of your I will, I'm going to define as nonsense, is you're p- picking fights you shouldn't be picking. You're involved in battles you shouldn't be involved in. You're being drawn into conversations you shouldn't be allowed to be drawn into. For some of us, um, there's been a real, um, I, I'm going to use the word confusion on this whole um, calling assignment mantle thing. And, and father would say, um, son, daughter, and man, there's a few people with this one. Um, I, you're, you're good. With, I got you. You're right where you need to be. Let your yes be yes. Okay, that was the father. Here's Dave. If you let your yes be yes, you won't be saying yes so often. You can't. I also feel like there's some that are a little bit, um, that have some time on their hands in here. Ah, yeah. Ha. Yeah. So um, if, if we're finding we have time on our hands in here that, um, and we're finding a way to occupy it, but, it's, it's, but we know intuitively inside that it's, 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 um, it's really, I don't want to say it's not productive. This isn't like a, this isn't like a, like a knock. This isn't like a, you know, hey, you know, you know you're being goofy. Um, it is, it is a, it's an offer. The Holy Spirit says, says he has an offer for you to fill your time with him, to fill your time with his assignment. And he does have assignments for you, and I want to um, just encourage you to go back to the last unfulfilled assignment and fulfill it. The last yes that you said yes to that you didn't fulfill. If you're finding on your hands, time on your hands, it's because you didn't fulfill your last yes. Um, faithfulness is a, is, a, is a cool thing. He's going to teach us faithfulness. Listen, this is going to be a little messy. You, yeah, some of us, and, and I, I'm going to put me in this one, uh, you know, um, there's some of us, our faithfulness is still a little rocky. Do what the Father has given you to do. Do what is in your hands to do. Uh, Scott has been talking about the parable of the, uh, the mammon. Luke 16? Where is it? Is it 16? Um, some of us need to read that parable. This is, this is a very important parable. Some of us have our, our eyes on the down the road, and God's saying, wait a minute, no, I have something for you right here. Right? There's, there's a lot of heaven in faithful little given much. There's a lot of heaven in that. Listen, and what is cool about this word is that you know the speaker's saying me too, right? I hope you see the vulnerability and the reality of it. God didn't tell me, you know, dude, procrastination and distraction. He, you know, just, you know, I want to say even just for you, but he didn't give it to me for you at, at first. He was saying that to me. Three weeks ago. This isn't something that I heard four years ago, and now I'm a master. A senior Jedi. There are a number of people in here that your, your faithfulness with your steward, and now I'm impatient. Cause, and, and this is where the promotion starts coming in. Um, Jesus is saying your promotion is at hand. In fact, you're already walking in it. And he wants to say to you, walk in your promotion. Man will recognize it as I release to man. If your pastoral gifting, if your gifting is in a pastoral pastor, what are you waiting for? The Lord would say, why are you waiting? If your gift is prophecy, why are you waiting? Is your gifted in the apostolic, what are you waiting for? If you're gifted in the evangelistic, what are you waiting for? If you're gifting into a teaching, what are you waiting for? Be released. If you're here, you're being trained and equipped. If you need more equipping, come to the fivefold. We'll help. This is going to be really, really fun. Keep your sense of humor, folks. Really important. 
You help me keep my sense of humor and I'll help you. All right? I don't mind you telling me, hey, Dave, you got to get this through your thick head. <laughs> Man, me and my dog Boone got too much in common. He's got one hard head. <laughs> I don't mind learning the same mistakes, you know, a couple times. I get tired of learning the same mistake five times. And I'm telling you, man, on this, listen, this distraction thing I'm having an easier time with, this procrastination thing, I feel like I keep having to chase, I keep having to chase this thing. I'm like on my fifth or sixth or seventh time around. It's costing me now. It's costing you. It's costing my family. Well, Dave, I thought it wasn't about purity. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm walking in a mantle. There is requirements. Far out? Man, I used all the time. Oh, I thought I was going to close early, too. Father, um, thank you. Um, favor, increase, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Well, thanks, guys, for coming out. Don't forget that there is no evening encounter service uh, next Sunday, but there is Christmas Eve service here on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock. So we're really excited to see all of you guys then. Um, and don't forget about the mitten tree. If you took a mitten um, off of the tree, uh, please uh, fulfill um, that uh, commitment on, and bring this stuff next Sunday. Um, and you guys are dismissed. Have an amazing night. We love you. Yeah.